45 years ago, I joined the IERE when I came out of university. And um, I didn't really know why I was doing it, but somehow in the back of my mind, I thought, well, here I am new into the profession. If there's any way that this profession is going to get um, recognition, being supported, then it was through the so-called professional institutes, and there were the IERE, Institute of Radio and Electronic Engineers, seemed like the one that was up my street. And so I paid this sum of money, despite the fact that we were relatively poor in those days. Uh, we, when we first moved into our first house, we had a cardboard box for a, uh, for a table, and we uh, slept on an airbed on the floor for a while, because that's all we could afford. And it's, um, so it was, it was something which I felt quite strongly about. Forty-five years later, I can honestly say, the disappoints me hugely. And so when I retired two years ago, then I decided that one thing I was going to do was to give the IE, IET, as it now is, a hard time. And so I asked for support from some of the members in this audience who, uh, who endorsed me, my proposal, and I joined the IET Council, which is actually the, the top-level body prior to the, uh, the executive officers. This is, it's an update to those people who, vote, who voted for me to put them in to say that I'm actually a year and a half into this process and I think I'm having quite a lot of success. But the whole thing, because of the, uh, uh, the, the political body that the IET is, can easily find a way of stopping it because it doesn't actually want to do this. So anyway, electronic systems is, are the science that delivers magic, okay? We've, we're all really familiar with this, but there's a concept here that, our, that, uh, that humanity has, is we don't really know anything about what, uh, what engineers do, but we have this ability to change stones fundamentally into smartphones. Uh, and that's a huge, huge technical capability. All sorts of things, the ability to take apart atoms, from materials, put them together again in a different structure. How can this fail to be exciting? Well, people, the, you know, the, the, the Joe public is very impressed by the ability of, that is given to him by a smartphone, and that's not the smartest phone, I must say, um, but has no idea about what our contribution to this is. We are magicians, as far as they're concerned. Those, that group of people um, they, they do magic. We have no idea what they do, but they do it and somehow that stone turns into a phone. So we, on the other hand, know that it is very clever, but we know that it's not magic. We know it's achieved by ingenuity and labor, and it's the technologies continue to evolve, so must its methods and tools. This is not a static thing. This is not something which, you know, we can make a modern smartphone by waving the same magic wand over the stone, it's just that we have a different spell now, and it's an easy thing to, 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 uh, to live with that concept, but from our point of view, we know it's only by the investment in a lot of hard work that this happens. Surely, though, engineering must be the most fascinating subject in the public eye, mustn't it? We deliver so much, we would expect that the people will all be interested in it. Now, back in 2011, the Engineering UK did a survey section of engineering. Now, by now, you've probably all read that, which is the good part. And the public perceived that engineering and engineers' role in tackling climate change are, go are, are going to be high. Um, that 92% of men and 84% of women said they thought engineering would play an important role in tackling this. The problem was on the second part of it. However, when asked what engineering developments in the last 50 years had had any impact on their lives, any impact on their lives, 50% of people couldn't think of anything. Um, <clears throat> so, alarmingly then, and these are some of the references that I used later in a document which I gave to the IET, but when you have... Uh, Michael Gove, running for Prime Minister at the time, who makes a statement like, people in this country have had enough of experts, then this is a bit dangerous, especially from a government who maintains that it actually wants to have more um, information-based decisions. 
so we don't want experts helping to confuse the information about the decisions that they want to take. Uh, there was the 19, uh, 2017 uh, BBC climate change debate where uh, ex-chancellor with no scientific qualifications was pitched against Sir Brian Hoskins, chairman of the Grantham Institute on climate change. The ready uh, failure of the media and the public really to confuse science with opinion. Uh, uh, the public believes an opinion because it's expressed by a lot of people is worth more than science because it's only expressed by one. And we know that that is not the same, but it, it is nevertheless a confusion of a failure of communication. Unfounded claims of the near-term availability of autonomous vehicles, the TSB banking crisis where the people couldn't get their money out because of an IT failure, because essentially the business believed that software is easy, because we've done that before, haven't we? And we can always turn out some new software, can't we? Um, and then, of course, we mustn't go far without mentioning the 737 MAX system failures. Seemingly not that complicated, but quite disastrous. So there are daily examples where scientists are casually blamed for failures of systems. So politicians and the man and woman in the street have little confidence in the word of experts. So if you say that something is difficult and somebody else says, no, it's not difficult, and indeed, if two or three people say it's not difficult and they don't understand the problem, then the people are still more likely to believe the person who says it's not a problem than the person who says it is. So you become uh, a doubting Thomas and people don't want to listen to you anyway. So we were in a sorry situation. Despite the huge and obvious contribution that engineers have made and continue to make for society, the roles of engineer, scientists and technician in delivering this have essentially become invisible. They don't know what we do, they don't know who we are, we don't, they don't know the businesses that we're involved in, they don't know how we contribute to the economy, we don't know how it's important for security, for, the, uh, for, for value and for employment inside the nation, all sorts of things. We're simply invisible. And the worrying thing, of course, is we're invisible to the decision makers in the country as well. So, we are the people. The governments set strategy, budgets and priorities um, and they're greatly influenced by opinion makers and the opinion makers are the media, legal and financial communities who all know nothing about engineering. So these, this, these decisions, these strategies that are affecting us, will affect us, will affect society are being made by people who have no knowledge of it only goes a little further, 20%, 27% of the population has a degree, 17% are, are STEM degrees, 3% effectively are engineering degrees and only half of those are working on en in engineering. So it's around 1 to 1.5% 1 of the population are people working in engineering with at least an engineering degree. It's not very many and of the 650 MPs only 26 had even STEM degrees. None were in the cabinet, in the government. So the, again, this is, this is the, the world that we're living in. They assign value to us and what we do. They are the ones who make the decisions about how important we are, about how the industries that we're involved in are important or not to the economy, whether they should be encouraged, whether the education priorities are set up there, whether the research priorities are supported. So the post-truth era then, um, Wikipedia says this and I quite liked it, uh, well let's say to be precise Wikipedia said this and if, if you now return to Wikipedia you find that it doesn't say this anymore but this is a good description. A political culture in which debate is framed largely by appeals to emotion and the repeated assertion of talking points whose factual rebuttals are ignored. So it's believing what you want to believe. And, uh, and so politicians are very keen, media, <coughs> excuse me, media people are also very keen because they do research as well. Um, media also present quite gaily the results of their own research findings into all sorts of things. Um, and essentially they know what they want to find and they go out looking for data to support it. And, uh, so it's, and, and that they believe is quality research. But the, th the point about it is from my point of view, 
as our technical achievements have ceased to speak for us, then the roles of engineers, scientists and technicians have effectively been deprecated in the public eye. That's important for doing something about it. Because now, as a member of the IET Council, I can go along and say to the IET, look, you guys, you're supposed to be looking after the profession. I think you've been negligent because you've let it fall into disrepute. Not just the IET, it's the professional engineering institutions altogether. Not just in this country, but in the world, in the majority of the world. So, I think that the, uh, the highlighting the issue of engineering public interest, suggesting that the IET was negligent in letting the professional engineering and scientific roles it represent drift into disrepute, suggests that as one of the world's largest professional engineering institutes, and it does make that claim, that it, is that it has a responsibility to take the lead in remedying this situation. So it's not something which it should be in a position to duck. Uh, now, the, the reason I can say this is this, that long URL at the bottom there basically says the paper that I've produced, which was submitted to the, it was a discussion document which was tabled to the council, uh, is public information. So it's available on the IET website. You can read it. It's a five-page document with references. And uh, it really was created to find out whether there was any appetite for this in the council, whether people on the council felt that there was this, this statement was something which needed to be supported or not. It got fantastic support. So much so, actually, that even before the paper was presented, the chair of council arranged that there would be a workshop immediately after the uh, council meeting, which involved some of the executive to discuss just this point. It was a... It was a um, what they call the World Cafe, but it was a discussion opportunity uh, uh, led by uh, usual um, brainstorming methods. But I think the, rather than perhaps having a lukewarm response, it actually got a fantastic response. So as a result of that, um, it went up into the council, what's this one called? Council update in the members' news um, back in... November 18. So we're, we're moving forward because this was submitted in June, July, um, and uh, it was reported that the IET is doing this. So discussing exploiting campaigns to better educate the public on engineering. So dressing now not just school kids, not just the ones who are planning a career, but their parents, because those are the ones who are going to be telling their school kids how important engineering is and how it's a good plan for them to, to think of it as being a career because it is likely to be something which is useful. And we don't really understand what it is, but boy, can we see how important it is. And so it goes. IET had already in November made public statements that it's interested in this area. I was commissioned at that point to take the document one stage further and to, to make an actual um, recommendation document because the way that the council works is it makes recommendations to the executive. The executive are the ones who are empowered to make financial and resource commitments for the IET. Uh, and the way that the council works is it makes these recommendations to the board and the, um, uh, the board then makes its own mind up about how much of this it's going to take. So this paper um, is that one at the top, um, which is... Uh, uh, which is just the minutes of the meeting, actually. But in the minutes of the meeting, it says, I presented this paper. The paper is confidential, so I can't tell you what's inside that. But three main conclusions from that, the three pr primary recommendations are that the IET formally recognizes the importance and urgency of re-establishing the public image of the engineering professions and professionals. This is a recommendation from the council to the executive. The, the executive comes under high pressure to act on this. Whether they will or not remains to be seen. They are their own people. But the supporting parts of this were 20 odd um, what we call suggestions which were a mechanisms by which this thing could be implemented. I can't talk about the detail of that right now because that is in the confidential section. 
But I'm telling you about this because I want you to know that the, we're trying to move the IET in the right direction. There's a surprisingly large enthusiasm for this. And with a little bit of pressure by propagating this information, then it's possible that we can influence that document to have just a little bit more shove inside the IET. So it would be really nice if you were to, uh, to say words to the effect of, I've seen this document on the website. There's, there's its links. Public document. Very interested to see that IET is uh, uh, making a, an, an actual proposal to move forward into uh, improving the public image of the profession and the professionals and uh, would like to encourage the IET to accept this as a fundamental role. Any support in this area would help it to get over the next hurdle. Right now, the full document has gone to the executive. They will be reviewing the document and making up their own mind about what, what they actually do. They don't consult me anymore. They don't consult the council anymore. They act on it or they don't act on it entirely at their will. So a little bit of help and encouragement from yourselves would be useful. Um, as always with these uh, presentations, they are available online. If you want any further information, uh, then uh, you, know, you can do it through me. Um, so I can't tell you what the IET will do. It's in the hands of the trustees. Come on, thank you. But if we want our professions to be as visible and valued as doctors, lawyers, accountants, estate agents, uh, uh, independent financial advisors and beauticians, because they're all regulated, then we have to be prepared to be regulated. We have to recognize that regulation means relatively small amount of stuff to us actually because we are mostly professional and we behave in a professional way. It just means that we've got to make commitments to be honest and, uh, and, to, be, uh, uh, and to operate with integrity. It also means that we have to make commitments to maintain our professional competence if we're going to practice because it would be irresponsible of us to claim to have an ability that we didn't actually have when we were practicing it. And if you bear in mind that as engineers we frequently know more about something than our bosses do. We certainly know more about things that our higher levels of management do. So the only people who can trust to, to check on our own integrity is ourselves. And this is, uh, this is why it becomes important to do this. Commitment to maintain professional standing does not have to be going on a training course. This can be working in professional groups with other people who consider your input to be a valid input. This can be, this can be the sort of things that you're already doing on a regular basis. The difference is going to be if you're just one little engineer or one scientist working on their own, then clearly they're not going to get that, um, that professional development from their, for being in their environment. They are ones who are going to have to go more on courses to make sure, or indeed webinars, whatever the, whatever the source of, of through life development, then uh, 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 Tim should be interested in this because education is, does not stop when you get your degree. It starts when you get a degree. <coughs> of course, we all know we're capable of this. But we've got to start putting some good stories together about our actual roles. The IET has got to have a public voice and the IET has got to support these good stories. These are not stories about, you know, big general stories about, you know, this bridge is a wonderful thing. It's about what an engineer's job is on a daily basis, what a scientist's job is on a daily basis. Some of these things are damn difficult to explain to Joe Public, but that doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't do it. It's uh, exciting. Remember the stone to a phone. It's exciting. It's just a case of finding the way of expressing it. We need to get our professional acts together, which means that we've got to, having told the public that there is a thing called an engineer, scientist, technician, or whatever, they, they want to see these things. You know, okay, what is a, you know, show me an engineer. Oh, he's one. How do we differentiate him from a charlatan? Well, we do it because this guy has made professional commitments. He is a chartered engineer. A chartered engineer is a status which, if you use uh, without it being claimed, will be sued by uh, engineering council who's, who, who keep a record on such matters. So it's, there is a mechanism there. We have to start using it properly. 
And we need some good coordinated PR. So when there's a good thing that happens, which involves engineers, we've got to explain it. And the IET has got to be there helping to get these messages over. And these are all sorts of things. But it's like an engineer doesn't have a voice when he's hidden behind a company interface. But an engineer can have a voice. Engineers contribute to, um, for requests for information from the IET, from the government. Um, and if we do that, then the, the information that we provide is consolidated information, not individual information. So we've got to participate in things like that. So when, when somebody makes a statement of you know, engineering or a scientist says something or other, then we've got to be in position to, to, to support. And the IET has got to be, or the professional engineering institutions as a whole, have got to be in position to say, it's not the engineering and scientific view that these claims which are being made by marketing and unsupported, um, uh, uh, per, un, unsupported or unknowledgeable people are true. We've got to say that they're with the significant doubt about that. And the other thing is it's fundamentally about the professions, not about the PEIs. The PEIs are not uh, the center of all this. The professions and the professionals are. And I'm being very careful here because it's engineers, scientists, and technicians. We're all professionals. We're in different levels, working in different areas. We need good definitions of those skill groups, those activities. I've got sets of definitions, but they're on different presentations. I haven't got time to, to talk about them now. Professional engineering institutes. So it's all of them, not a specific one. <clears throat> and of course, the scientific disciplines uh, and understanding physics, modeling physics, manipulation of physics, and application of physics. That's pretty well all of what we do. Um, and it's the, the disciplines then across all of the engineers, scientists, and te technical areas. IET as a concept has accepted this, which I think is really good. It's a very good starting point. It needs that push to make it into a reality right now. So that's all I've got to say. Stay tuned. This, uh, this is a saga which is, is still running. Uh, I'm a member of council for three years, so I'm halfway through my period already. Uh, for a ship of state, there's quite a lot of movement going on here right now. I'm pleased to hear that, but it will have to continue without me. And so uh, the, the groundwork that I've, that I've started there is the start of all this thing. Okay? Ian, can I just praise you for doing that and uh, recognize the success you've had in getting the uh, traction so far? Um, I've got a slightly tangential question because it's come up before and I don't really know what I think, but in some countries, engineer is a registered word, so you don't see it used in the casual way it's used in the UK. But I kind of wonder if we were to go after protecting it, whether we would actually end up looking like bad guys because it would be seen as being a bit classy or snobby. So I was wondering, if, in thinking about what you've been thinking through, whether you've had any thoughts about the pros and cons of pushing for making it a registered word as opposed to just something that had to be registered with a CE engine. Well, two, two, thing, two things about that. The engineer isn't a registered word, but the chartered, chartered engineer is. Yes. So it's, a, it's a, uh, a title which can be used today in a registered way. Um, so the, the other thing is that people... Basically, the consumers have no idea what engineer or chartered engineer means. So, uh, and, uh, and I think if this is handled the right way, it's the consumers that want to see um, chartered engineers used in appropriate positions. Not the registration of the title. It's not about registration. It's about the professionalism of the industry and explaining to the public, the general public, the adult general public, about why that's important. So if we, call, if we explain to them what, en what engineers do, then it will become more apparent to them why they need to have professional engineers doing it rather than uh, you know, just Joe who knows one end of a soldering iron from another. Which I, which I agree with, and that, what, that's why I was yeah. thinking about, do we need to remove the word engineer from places where it doesn't actually get used in the way we want it? You can never remove something. With that, that particular genie is out of the bottle. People are going to continue to use the word engineer, and they're going to use the word technician, and they're going to use... But 
well, there are these registered titles and those registered titles are protected. Yeah. They, they are, they're part of the toolbox of the solution. They're not the solution. That's not the whole thing. Yeah. And that's why I was asking yeah. about, for those curious to see whether in thinking this through yeah. you would decide whether that pursuing the exclusive use of the word engineer for what we mean to be engineering no. was an important thing and what it no. sounds like you're saying is no, just go on a positive... We've got to, you've got to move from where we are, not from where we'd like to be. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And uh, so there, is, there are things which are going on, and the 20-odd the recommendations take a lot of things which are going on and push them in the right direction. Yes. Uh, yes. Has there been any thought about doing something joint with other professional bodies to try and reinstate the expert? Yeah, reinstate the expert. To mm -hmm. attempt to propaganda to the whole experts of rubbish. Well, per first of all, the issue of expertise, because that's an easier one to address, that is actually addressed in the other part of the document that I can't, t can't tell you about. The re establishment. Of expert now, actually, you can you can do a lot for the for that by essentially telling all of the people who are registered, if they claim to be an expert and they're not, then they're liable to be struck off, because you have this tool. The wonderful thing about having a registered title is it means if you if you fail in your integrity and in your operation and in in, in maintaining your skills, then you can be struck off. And if people become aware of the fact that they need to have engineers in the loop who are uh, regulated, regulated, not, reg not, not controlled, but uh, if they are not able to find an, an engineer who was appropriate and still current, then they would quite legitimately say, um, we're not going to buy the X product because this is, this is missing from it. Now, the, the second point was the wider context of uh, other professions. Yes, you're right. And post-truth is a wider concept than this. You do, however, have to catch a wave. Um, so the way I presented this thing was quite different from what I originally had in mind before I joined the council. Because essentially I had to identify what the IET was already doing and to push it in coordinated directions to get it where I want it to be. Uh, it's not to come up with a totally brand new idea. Let's say the totally brand new idea may be let's enforce the use of engineering. It could be in itself a major task and is destined to fail. We will not get IET to support um, this uh, post-truth problem in the wider professional area. But I will get IET to support the post-truth problem in the engineering, science and uh, techno uh, technology areas because they are still fairly close together. Even though we're talking electronics and uh, you know, m mechanics and uh, civil, civil engineering, these are all engineering contexts. And so we've got a fairly broad context here. The IET, one of the, one of the three bullets there was to set up a proper project and to, to the, the project is to make sure that it was coordinated across the engineering PEIs. Now that also includes the Science Council, we're listed in the, in the other part, because the Science Council manages the um, Chartered Scientist uh, registration mark. There's no fundamental reason why um, the management of the approval of those shouldn't be through you know, a coordinated body like PEI IET. You would expect the PEIs to take charge of the administration of the technologies which are broadly under their domain. So the, you're not going to get the IET to actually move into the, chart, the civil engineering domain, but it's still engineering domain, but we would expect the civil engineering domain to do the similar management of chartered engineer st status for people who are operating in that domain. So it's, it's complicated. No, they don't have any views of what engineers do. Yes, of course. 
like Star Trek and other mm. deep sci-fi that tend to portray engineering in a rather positive light. Now, if you look at some of the shows from most of them, either reality TV, soap operas, um, or shows that just portray um, engineers as funding... Yeah. But you've got good stuff which is going on too. I mean, the stuff that Brian Cox and uh, Ed, uh, what's his name, Khalil, um, they are excellent programs and they're talking about science. Now, how big an audience they get, I don't know. I suspect that of, you know, Joe Public, there's an awful lot of people who don't watch that kind of program. My wife wouldn't go anywhere near them. Uh, the, probably the people who watch them are engineers and scientists who are already interested in that domain. But that's good. It is still out there in the public domain and some kids will be watching it and they'll still be learning from it. And there will be some people who are kind of interested in what keeps the moon up. You know, and, and I think that th there is not just one channel that we're going to need to address to remedy this thing. We've got to make use of the, 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 uh, the media channels which are available to the public. Yes, and Tomorrow's World was mine. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sure.